Well, good morning. And welcome to beautiful Woodford County. My name is uh, my name is Mark LaPalm, and I'm the founder and CEO of Isaiah House. And I want to thank each of you for joining us on this special day. Not just for Isaiah House, but more importantly for the thousands of families that we serve. Today is about them. It's about Kentucky, and it's about trust, and it's about commitment. Following our special announcement this morning, we are having our grand opening of this beautiful facility here in uh, Woodford County, uh, and that'll take place around 1050. If you can hang around with us, we'd appreciate that for a ribbon cutting. At this time, I'm excited to announce that Isaiah House has been awarded a grant of nearly $2.5 million dollars from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. <laughs> Last year, Isaiah House served over 2,000 residents of Kentucky through our residential and outpatient treatment programs. And none of those individuals were employed when they entered our doors, broken, desperate for help. This year, Isaiah House is on target to serve 3,500 clients. Isaiah House has long been a leader in Kentucky, in our country, since 1999, not just in licensed and accredited modalities of substance use disorder treatment, but I believe just as important, education. Our main campus in Washington County is a certified college campus, a first in the nation, with academic and trade classes offered at no cost to our clients while in the program. We also provide work readiness, job training, and guaranteed employment opportunities for all of our clients who enter our care. Some of them already have skills that our employers in Kentucky need. Others lack job skills, but can be trained and given a chance to succeed as reliable, productive employees of, and our state and employers need them. This grant will focus on helping them get the treatment and training that they need and connect them with potential employers. Many of these activities have already started in our state and we will use this funding to complement those efforts. We expect to serve almost 7,000 Kentuckians with this funding. Saving lives and restoring families is our goal. We do that by providing hope through healing, opportunity, purpose, employment, and education, which provides a real pathway to long-term success, addiction to purpose, and crisis to career. This grant provides us with the extraordinary opportunity to also impact our state's economy and help fill the workforce gaps caused by the high rate of substance abuse in our communities. And we can't do this alone. It'll take collaboration. So joining us today are our partners and representatives of the Kentucky Workforce Innovation Board, the Bluegrass Workforce Innovation Board, and Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. We want to recognize and applaud our partners in this grant project. This award is a collaboration and proves what can happen when we reach across aisles and come together as Kentuckians. We're proud of the long-standing histories of our partners and, they, and all that they do for our people and our state. So we will be working side by side to change lives and accomplish extraordinary goals. And at this time, I'd like to provide our partners with an opportunity to speak briefly about this exciting opportunity. So first up, if you would please welcome Mary Pat Reagan, uh, Deputy Secretary of Education and Workforce Development. Thank you. Good morning. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, hopefully we'll make this quick so everyone doesn't melt. Um, but we want to um, just uh, thank all of our partners and collaborators. Um, this is an important uh, grant for the state and our role will be filling in the gaps 
uh, to ensure that whether that's through internships or through tra leadership coaching or education, that we fill those gaps and help people where, where they need it today. So we're very excited to be here, grateful for the partnerships and the co collaborations and look forward to working with everyone as we go forward. So thank you. Next up, if we could welcome Amy Glasscock, Director of Workforce for the Bluegrass Workforce Innovation Board. Good morning. I'm honored to be here representing the Bluegrass Workforce Innovation Board and the Governing Board of Local Elected Officials for the 17 counties of the Bluegrass. One of their priorities over the last several years has been to help those in recovery and help those struggling with addiction. Through our Transitions to Transformation program, we have done that uh, in the Bluegrass. We are so thankful and appreciative and proud to be partnering with Isaiah House and all these other partners. We will be able to help hundreds of more individuals over the next several years with their addiction and recovery needs. This week, I had the opportunity to meet one of our participants that we helped um, with employment about a year ago and he shared his successes and his experiences with our Transitions to Transformation program. And he made a comment that has really stuck with me over the last several days. He said, through the internships and the transitional program, that we not only changed lives, but we were helping to save lives. And I truly feel with this opportunity with Isaiah House, we'll continue to not only change lives, but help to save lives along the process. Thank you all for having us today. Thank you, Isaiah House and all the other partners, and we're looking forward to this partnership and the amazing things that we can accomplish. Next, please welcome Rena Sharp. Rena is the Chief Operating Officer of Goodwill Industries of Kentucky. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here uh, to represent this very important cause. I, like many of you, um, have been affected by addiction very, very close to my family. And I can promise you, just like you know, that they didn't wake up one day and say, you know, I wanna be an addict. In fact, both of my nephews are very athletic. They were star athletes and had opportunities to play college ball in multiple sports. And because of life circumstances and making poor choices, they fell into addiction. And we almost lost them multiple times. I'm happy to say that they are both alive and well today with amazing families. They're thriving and they're a, a very great contribution to the workforce and to their families, to their children. So I know that people do recover and they recover because of programs like this and the investments that are, individuals are willing to make in the work that the Isaiah House does we partner with them already in many different ways and this is just going to be another way that goodwill is going to be able to contribute we're all about second chances at goodwill whether it's the clothing that you donate and purchase in our stores that we turn into dollars that go toward this important work or whether it's someone who comes to our resource center in need of housing and other life supports that will help them to get back on the path to self-sufficiency our part in this work is going to be very important we will be providing direct career coaching to all of the individuals that the Isaiah House will serve through this recovery program. They will be helping them with their life challenges. We are the largest non, uh, nonprofit workforce development entity in Kentucky, but our definition of workforce development may be a little different than you think. Before job skills training and before job placement in that career track, you need to really work on the workforce development things that they've lost because of their addiction. Those are transportation, mental health supports, um, addiction recovery, all of the things that they need to be able to truly be able to be a successful workforce. That's what our workforce development at Goodwill does. And I can promise you that through your commitment to this grant, to this work with the Isaiah House, not only will lives be changed, but families will be restored. And we're just very, very proud to be a small part of it. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your support. Thank you, Rena. Um, we owe a, a debt of sincere gratitude to the people of our state who fight tirelessly for us in Washington. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Congressman Andy Barr and Senator Mitch McConnell, who have been incredible supporters of treatment and Isaiah House 
and have really made this grant a reality. Congressman Barr. Well, thank you, Mark, and uh, congratulations, and more importantly, thank you. Congratulations uh, to the Isaiah House and to the Workforce Investment Board and Goodwill Industries for being chosen and selected in this competitive process to get this $2.5 million grant that's going to help over 6,000, nearly 7,000 of our fellow Kentuckians struggling with addiction and employment. Uh, but more importantly, thank you, because what you have done with Isaiah House over the years in helping people uh, overcome their addiction and deal with their struggles and meet people where they are and recognize that there is dignity and worth in every individual, no matter what uh, path their life has taken. And recognizing that dignity and bringing that to them through the services that you provided uh, is so valuable and, and it's, it's why you've received this grant today. And, Thank you to the Bluegrass Ad and the Workforce Investment Board for uh, partnering here to provide these services. You know, a few years back, uh, when the opioid addiction crisis was really on the rise and the surge in Kentucky, uh, we started hearing from families uh, struggling uh, and, and terribly difficult stories. In some cases, uh, people who lost their lives to the scourge of addiction. And we knew that this was not just a local problem here in Kentucky. I mean, we heard the statistics that Kentucky suffered from the third highest opioid overdose mortality rate in the country. But this was a problem that was nationwide. And we, we talked to our colleagues in, in the Congress. We heard uh, heartbreaking stories from around the country. And so Leader McConnell and I and our colleagues in the Congress on a bipartisan basis recognized we needed to do something about this and, and do something fast. And we formed in the 6th Congressional District a recovery working group in Isaiah House became a member of it, but a lot of faith-based and not-for-profit organizations, people on the front lines of the fight against addiction, they came to us and they gave us ideas. These were not ideas that came from Washington. They came to us and they said, what works? And they said, what works is not just putting a roof over folks' heads, not just a 28 or 30 day uh, uh, detox program, but long-term transitional housing with employment services and wraparound services and tender love and care and people who really cared for these people and recognized the value that these folks could offer to society. And so we took that idea back to Washington and we came up with this idea of the comprehensive addiction recovery through uh, em employment uh, re-entry or the Career Act. And I give great credit to our next speaker, Leader McConnell, for shepherding this legislation through the Senate. But we came in a bicameral way, in a bipartisan way. We included it in a bill, and I think it became law, uh, and President uh, Trump signed it into law in, in 2018. This grant is the first fruit from that. Uh, there's some funding that came from the Department of Housing and Urban Development from this bill that's in Frankfurt right now that will help specifically on the housing piece. But this $2.5 million do grant came from SAMHSA. So it was a bill that address both the housing side and the wraparound services, the employment services side. And this is a win-win because not only uh, is a good job part of the recovery process for these individuals, but it's also a win because, let's face it, our employers need these wonderful people. They need them. We have, we have a desperate need for workers in our economy right now. So. This grant is a win-win in every single way, and I'll, I'll conclude with this. The biggest thanks is to those individuals who are the clients of Isaiah House. The 6,000 men and women, the 6,000 plus men and women who will be served by this grant, thank you for your courage, thank you for your persistence, Thank you for recognizing that you are worth it and you are needed. You are needed as a contributor to our society, to our community. God bless each and every one of you, and thanks for what you do. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator McConnell. Well, Mark, first let me congratulate you on your spectacular leadership. <clears throat> But for, as Andy pointed out, but for the ideas that we were given in Washington, 
we would not have known how to effectively tackle uh, this problem. Uh, in my old job as Majority Leader of the Senate, I had a chance to set the priorities, uh, hearing from people around the country in the Senate, and um, on both sides, it was obvious this was not a uniquely Kentucky problem. We moved it to the forefront, and as Congressman Barr pointed out, the Career Act, which is this, this grant is part of the Career Act, he and I crafted is a direct result of input that we got from Kentucky, from Mark and others, who told us what needed to be done to get people successfully through the transition and back into a normal life, which means a job. Uh, a job is so extremely important. And then along came the pandemic and everything got worse. And. Um, I also want to congratulate everybody who stayed the course during that, and of course, as soon as we thought we were through with that, here it comes again. So I want to make an observation about one other thing. There's one way to end the pandemic, get vaccinated. There's a lot of un untrue, <laughs> call it what you will, information bouncing around on social media. But let me tell you what is a fact. The fact is that 90% of the people in the hospitals in Kentucky and around the country have one thing in common. They're unvaccinated. So if you know somebody who's not vaccinated, for goodness sake, get vaccinated. FDA just approved uh, the Pfizer yesterday. Uh, Monday, I mean, and uh, look, this is the only way it's going to end. We're never going to get past this until we all get vaccinated. So I'm assuming all of you have, and if you haven't, please do so. And again, Mark, thank you for the opportunity to be here and to see an example of how the money that Congressman Barr and I produce is being put to work. Thank you, everyone. Just for the record, I'm vaccinated. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman Barr and, and Leader McConnell. Uh, we simply could not be successful in this venture without their support. Congressman Barr is passionate about recovery and actually started the first monthly roundtable of providers, I think it was about two or three years ago, actually in his office and brought together all of the thinkers and the, the movers and the shakers in Kentucky and treatment and actually got the silos torn down, got us in the same room talking to each other, and I can't, I can't express how grateful I am for that. Um, Senator McConnell, uh, for those of you that, that don't know, uh, but since 2015, Leader McConnell has delivered almost $300 million to Kentucky's substance abuse prevention, treatment, and enforcement efforts. As well as, yes, <laughs> as well as making it possible for nonprofits like Isaiah House to receive the P3 and Idle grant funding. And for that, we're extremely grateful, Senator. Thank you. Isaiah House is proud of our success, but that success would not be possible if not for uh, those of you who shine a light and hold the spotlight. While we go into places, not many are, are actually willing to go. So I'd like to thank some of our dedicated board members that are here today, if I could. We've got Mike Thompson in the back. John Tennant is, is also here today. Ronnie Ping, our board chair, is in the crowd. Um, I think uh, Tiffany Yeast is here today. Um, and I don't think I saw anybody else, but we owe a, a debt of gratitude to our, our selfless board. Um, I'd also like to recognize some of our other day-to-day -day and local legislative partners. Our very own Kentucky State representative from the 56th District, Daniel Fister, is here today. Uh, we also have James Kay from Wood Woodford County Judge Executive in, in the back over there, and Brian Trowget, Mayor of uh, Versailles, who we met even before we, we opened here. Uh, Stephanie Evans Kingsley, the Executive Director from the Kentucky Workforce Innovation Board is 
is here with us. Mike Riley, uh, one of my heroes and champions, is is here today. He's with the program uh, program development manager for Bluegrass Workforce Innovation Board. Austin Wingate of our amazing Woodford County Chamber of Commerce is is here with us today. Um, Senator, but 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 honestly, more important to us, our medical director Ralph Alvarado um, is is here today. Uh, Representative Adam Bowling uh, is is here today from the 87th district and sponsor, uh, if you don't know, of the Recovery Ready Communities Bill. Um, from the AG office, we have Blake Christopher, um, Kylie Fouché from uh, uh, Congressman Guthrie's office is is here with us. Um, Representative Kim King from the 55th District, uh, just a strong advocate for recovery, is here with us to celebrate. Uh, Mayor of Historic Midway, uh, Kentucky, uh, Mace, uh, Grayson Vandegrift, is here with us today. Amy Longwell, Community Coordinator of the Healing Community Study, is here with us. Uh, Amy Aness, Prevention Specialist for Boyle County from the UK Healing Study. Sari Kaysen, Community Outreach Manager and Dr. Melissa Anderson uh, from Brightview Health are here with us today. Yolanda Mason uh, is here with us from Invictus Four Score Treatment Center. John Dye from the Kentucky State Chamber. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure if Linda Gordon made it today. Mayor Linda, Linda Gordon was supposed to be here, not today. Um, she changed her mind. Joanne Goods and Robin Brown from the Fayette County District Court um, are, are with us today. Thank you for coming. And last but not least, uh, Russ Scott, uh, president of Biotap Medical, is joining us here today. I'd like to recognize some other local heroes that are here today who fight like there's no tomorrow to help save those caught in the despair of addiction. These people and programs they represent are warriors and tearing down silos and working with other providers to ensure no one goes without a bed in the state of Kentucky for treatment. They literally work around the clock to help save one person from overdosing and finding the help they need. I have James Sweezy here today from co-founder of the beautiful Robert Alexander Center in Mount Washington. If you've never been there, you need to go and look it up. But James is just tireless in his effort to keep people alive. Todd Johns, founder and CEO of Revive, is with us today. Revive Lifehouse in Nicholasville. They also just opened up their first outpatient clinic uh, to complement their residential programs in, in Jessamine County. Um, Rob Perez was supposed to be to, here today. Rob's a, a local hero, uh, DVA Kitchen, but he had his own grand opening today, and I'm sorry we stole all of you from there. Um, Andrew Hager is in the house with us. And uh, Andrew is with Vital Behavioral Health, but also he's the founder of Blameless Children and Heart Ministries right here in Woodford County. And I can testify to the fact that they will call me at 2 a.m. They don't care. If somebody needs a bed for treatment, uh, and I can do the same to them, they're going to be up, they're going to respond, and they're going to get somebody in treatment. We also have Kelly Bates, uh, Andy Johnson, uh, Lucas Setti, Peyton Tierney um, uh, from the Chamber of Commerce in, in Lexington. In a few minutes, we will be cutting the ribbon for this newly remodeled and new to Isaiah House facility. We would love for each of you, if possible, to join us for the celebration. This program is a 28-bed women's center providing for up to 90 days of residential treatment and serving over 200 women. I think we can all agree that this setting is a pretty beautiful setting to recover in. I do want to thank Sam and Charlene Williams who are here with us today. They are the original founders of the previous program that was housed here called the Nile and saved thousands of lives. When they retired at the end of 2019, they thought of us in Isaiah House and made it possible for Isaiah House to acquire the property. Can we give a Round of applause, please, to Sam and Charlene. Also like to thank Pastor Jeff Johnson and Kingsway Church for making it possible. 
Uh, Jeff is also a hero in the, as a major in the Lexington Fire Department. And I'll end with this. In 2020, we lost nearly 100,000 Americans to this disease. In Kentucky, almost 2,000 of our brothers and sisters, our dads and our moms, our sons and our daughters, passed away from substance use disorder. They were some of our best and brightest citizens. And our state and our country needed them and needs them still today. We can no longer afford to turn our heads and look the other way while we lose a generation. We can no longer afford to look the other way while we lose our future. Together, we can make a difference. And together, we do recover. And, and folks, I think that's, that's going to wrap up our ceremony for this morning with uh, with Congressman Barr and, and, and uh, Senator McConnell. Um, I think some of us, maybe some of the partners might be available for a few questions. Uh, if you have any questions about, about the grant or how we're going to partner together. And if there is no questions, I think we're going to move to the ribbon cutting. Thank you all. Right now. Okay, on the count of three. One, two,